All right. In this video, we study some frequently used elementary functions, such as algebraic functions, exponential functions, logarithm, trigonometric functions, inverse trigonometric functions, and also hyperbolic functions. Okay, let's start. Okay, first, algebraic functions. Okay, uh, the simplest kind of algebraic functions are polynomials, such as this, f of x equal to a n x to the power of n, a n minus 1, x to the power of n minus 1, and so on, down to a 1 x plus a 0. Where these a n, a n minus 1, and so on, and a 1, a 0, they are all uh, real numbers usually, and i from 0, 1, 2, up to n. Okay, these are called polynomials. Polynomial functions. Okay, next, suppose we have two polynomial functions, uh, g of x and h of x. Suppose they are polynomials polynomial functions. And further, we assume that h of x is non-zero. Okay, then based on these two functions, we can define a new function. Let's call it f of x as g of x divided by h of x. And such, so this is polynomial function divided by another polynomial function, and we call it a rational function. And as a special case of a rational function, if we cons assume that h of x is constantly equal to 1, so it's identically equal to 1, then a rational function is nothing but a polynomial function because what we left is just uh, this numerator, g of x, so it's, which is just a polynomial function. So rational functions include polynomial functions as a special case. And uh, in polynomial functions, all the powers of x are, you know, the powers are just natural numbers, okay, either or zero, okay. So 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. So, uh, for example, if f of x is equal to square root of x, then this is not a polynomial function, okay? nor it's a rational function. However, we can still define this as a kind of solution to a, an algebraic equation, such as f of x squared minus x equals to 0. So as a solution to this equation, we can define this function, square root of x, as a function. So this is an example of an algebraic function, which is not a rational function. So let us give a general definition of algebraic functions now. Okay, here's the definition. Uh, f of x, suppose this is a continuous function, and is called an algebraic function. Function. If the following holds. That means there exist polynomials. polynomial functions, uh, g, g0 of x, g1 of x, and so on, and up to gn of x. So there are n polynomial functions such that uh, the following uh, equation is satisfied. g of x times f of x to the power of n plus g n minus 1 of x, f of x to the power of n minus 1, and so on. 
and g1 of x and f of x plus g0 of x equal to 0. So this continuous function is an algebraic function if there are such polynomial functions that this equation holds. So in this example, so f of x equal to square root of x is an, is an algebraic function because there are some polynomials. By the way, constant function is also a polynomial. So in this case, you know, we have f squared. So uh, something like g2 would be just one constant, okay? And uh, there is no linear term of f, so g1 of x would be 0, and g0 of x would be negative x. Okay, so if we define this uh, g, g1, g2, and g0, then this equation is satisfied, right? Uh, that is this equation. So uh, let's write it more explicitly. g2 of x, f of x squared, and g1 of x, f of x, but this is 0. And g0 of x equal to 0. So this part is 1, and this part is 0, and this part is negative x. So since uh, this function satisfies this equation, we can say that uh, square root of x is an algebraic function. In short, an algebraic function is a function that can be defined as a solution to an algebraic equation. Okay, so that's all for algebraic functions, and next we move on to exponential functions. Okay, suppose a is a positive real number. Then f of x, uh, a to the power of x is called an exponential function. Okay. exponential function uh, with base a. Okay, so this a is this a. And when we say the exponential function, that means the base is e, that is Napier's constant, constant, okay, 2.718 and so on. So if this is the case, e to the power of x is the, the, exponential function. And what's important about exponential functions is that if a is less than 1, of course it's greater than 0, then a to the power of x is monotone decreasing function. And if a is greater than 1, then a, a to the power of x is monotone increasing function. So you should be able to plot the graphs of these functions. So if okay, a is between 0 and 1, it should look like this. It's strictly decreasing, monotone decreasing. And when x is equal to 0, the value is always 1. Okay, a to the power of 0 is 1, whatever the value of a is. And uh, when x uh, a is greater than 1, then it's monotone increasing. So it's, it goes like this. And a is less than 1. So in this case, that's... In this case, this. Oh, by the way, uh, exponential functions are always positive, right? Because a is positive, so power any powers of a, a is positive. So when a is less than 1, it's monotone decreasing, but uh, it's bounded below, and the lower bound is 0. And this one uh, case also, if a is greater than 1, 
it's monotone increasing, but still it's bounded from below. Bounded below, and it, it never goes negative, however small the value of x is. Okay, so that means exponential function a to the power of x is a function from all of real numbers to uh, positive real numbers. Okay, is a bijection. So it's a bijective function. Since it's, it's a bijection, then uh, that means its inverse exists. Inverse function exists. And that inverse function is defined to be, so uh, if we define f of x uh, as a to the power of x, then its inverse function, we define it as log base a of x. Okay, so inverse of this exponential function is the logarithm. And it's a log logarithm, log uh, rhythm, or logarithmic function. And when the base happens to be Napier's constant, constant that is log e of x, we usually omit this e and uh, call it a natural logarithm. Okay, so this is natural logarithm. We already studied a lot about uh, logarithm, so let's just prove a few uh, limiting properties of logarithm. Uh, first one is this limit x goes to 0 log 1 plus x over x is equal to 1. So let's prove that. Uh, first of all, 1 plus x log is equal to so log, so this is log 1 plus x times 1 over x, right? So that is log 1 plus x to the power of 1 over x. And uh, as x approaches 0, then this converges to, so this inside this thing, 1 plus x to the power of 1 over x, if you remember, it converges to e, Napier's constant. But log here, we are considering the natural logarithm. So the base is e, so this value is equal to 1. Okay. Here we use the property of uh, limit of composite function. Okay. Composite means first function, and then after that we apply this. It's a composite function. Okay. Uh, next, uh, we prove limit x goes to 0, e to the power of x minus 1 over x is equal to 1. So let's prove this. And to prove that, let's put t equals to e to the power of x minus 1. And then from here, we have e to the power of x equal to t plus 1. And uh, taking the natural logarithm of both sides, we have x equals to log of t plus 1. Okay, and x here is this one, and uh, e, this one is, this whole thing is t, right? So e to the power of x minus 1 over x is equal to t log uh, what, t plus 1. But this one is just the this, but uh, 1 over this, right? So this is again a con converging, to, this converges to 1 as, uh, oh wait a minute, so x goes to 0, so x goes to 0, then that means x goes to 0, then t goes to 0. Yeah, so the limit is just same as this, but uh, 1 over this, but still that's 1 and we are done.
Okay, next let's uh, study a little bit about trigonometric functions, sine, cosine, and tangent functions. Uh, but we already know this. Uh, what's important is that they are periodic functions. Okay, and uh, for example, sine of x plus 2 pi n, where n is a natural number or integer, is equal to sine of x. And similarly, cosine x plus 2 pi n is cosine x. And this is easy to understand uh, from the way we define sine and cosine. So we define sine and cosine by using the unit circle. Remember? Unit circle on the complex plane. And so unit circle means this radius is 1, and also it's centered at the origin. Okay, so if this angle is x, then the then cosine x is the x coordinate or the real part of this nat uh, complex number. So that is cosine x, and and mm. sine x is the imaginary part of this complex number. So that's sine x. Since you know these points are on the unit circle. So if it rotates by 2 pi, or any integer multiples of 2 pi, then we still have the same value. So that's what this, these equations mean. And tangent x was defined as sine x over cosine x. And it is also a periodic function, but the period is not 2 pi. It's pi. So tangent x plus pi n is equal to tangent of x. And you should verify why this is so. And regarding sine function, we give the following formula uh, without proof for the moment. So sine x over x, when x goes to 0, this converges to 1. Uh, if you are interested, try to prove this by using some uh, geometric argument. We don't give the proof of this equation here, but uh, we show one example how to use this. Uh, for example, consider this limit, 1 minus cosine x over x squared when x goes to 0. Okay. So by multiplying uh, numerator and denominator by 1 plus cosine, we have the following. So 1 minus cos x, 1 plus cos x. And the uh, denominator is x squared, 1 plus uh, cosine x. And for the numerator, uh, we expand this. And then we have 1 minus cosine squared x. Uh, 1 plus cosine x. And 1 minus cosine squared, it's sine squared. So sine squared x squared. And 1 plus cosine x. Now we have sine over x, right? So limit and sine x over x squared 1 over 1 plus cosine x. So this one converges to 1 and this one, so as x goes to 0, sine uh, cosine x converges to 1. So we have 1 over 2 here and 1 here. So that should be 1 over 2. Okay, next we consider inverse trigonometric functions. However, these cannot be defined so naively because, for example, let's consider sine x. Okay, if you plot the function, 
x and uh, so sine x is a is a periodic function so it looks like this so it's periodic something like this so the maximum value is positive 1 and then minimum value is negative 1 it oscillates forever uh, with the period of 2 pi right so this is 0 and this is 2 pi and uh, this should be negative 2 pi so for every possible f value of the function we have multiple values of x with the same value right so let's uh, pick this value for example then this x this x this x and this x and this x. there are actually infinitely many x's for which sine x gives this value so that means sine x this is not a bijection since it's not a bijection we cannot define the inverse right inverse can be defined if and only if the function is bijection so how can we handle this situation the problem is the domain of the function sine the domain is entire real number and the codomain is between negative one and positive one including both ends okay so but we can make it bijective by limiting the domain so not considering entire real numbers but uh, only considering for example if we consider uh, let's see uh, from here to here okay so that will be uh, what is it so this will be pi over 2 and this will be negative pi over 2 so if we cons limit the domain from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2 then we consider only this part of the function then as you can see this is a monotone increasing function and uh, defined on a closed domain therefore it is a bijection there we can define uh, the inverse function of the sine function and that inverse is called arc sine and its domain is this is the codomain of sine function obviously so the domain is the the closed interval interval between negative one and positive one and the codomain is this uh, from negative pi half to positive pi half and we do similarly for the cosine function but for the cosine function we need a different domain right because if you plot uh, the cosine function so cosine x it's like this okay so if you uh, limit the domain to between negative uh, pi half to positive pi half it's this uh, it's this part and within this part the cosine function is not bijective because for each value here there are two values that gives the same uh, cosine x right so it's not bijection so instead of this we should limit the domain to somewhere here then it's monotone decreasing so it's a bijection and in this case so that's z from 0 to uh, pi okay so limit the domain of cosine function from 0 to pi and the codomain will be the, p the maximum value is positive 1 and the minimum value is negative 1 so the codomain is the closed interval between negative 1 and positive 1 
And the inverse of cosine function is called arc cosine. Then the domain of which is between negative 1 and positive 1, and the codomain is, of course, between 0 and pi. Now let's consider tangent function. And the definition of tangent was sine x over cosine x, but uh, cosine x can be 0 sometimes. So its domain is not entire real numbers. So, uh, for example, cos when uh, x is equal to pi half, cosine x is 0. So that point should be excluded. And in fact, uh, multiples of uh, half integer multiples of uh, pi should be excluded. Okay, that means pi half, three pi half, five pi half, and both positive and negative. Okay, so let's plot first the function uh, tangent function here. So it looks like this. Uh, let's see, suppose this is pi half, and suppose this is negative pi half. So between negative pi half and pi half, uh, cosine x is always positive, remember? Look, look at this function. So it's positive between, uh, within this interval. And sine x can be negative if x is negative. So if we move x from 0 to negative pi half, tangent x diverges to infinity. So it's, it will diverge to infin negative infinity. And if we move x from 0 to positive pi half, it will diverge to positive infinity. So it looks like this. And uh, Now, this point and this point should be excluded because at, at, at these points, tangent x is undefined. And, but if we go beyond that point, it looks just a repeat of the same graph. So that is, so this should be pi. And this should be 3 pi over 2 and uh, like this. So we'll repeat the same graph. And so this is negative pi and uh, th negative 3 pi half. And the graph looks the same. So negative infinity to positive infinity. So same graph over and over. So, and uh, it's obvious that this function is not bijection at all. See, if we give some value of y, then there are multiple values, intersections. So it's not injection. Therefore, it's not bijection. But if we limit the domain to this interval, for example, where any domain should, okay, should be OK, but uh, let's make it simple, then it is bijection, right? So if tangent is a function between negative pi half to positive pi half to uh, the value of tangent can vary from negative infinity to positive infinity so that means entire real number okay then this is a bijection okay so its inverse can be defined and that is called arc tangent which is defined on the entire real numbers and the codomain is between negative 2 and positive 2, uh, pi half and negative pi half and neg positive pi half. OK. And finally, we define hyperbolic functions. Hyperbolic functions. They are somewhat similar to trigonometric functions. Yeah, here are the definitions. Cosine hyperbolic, cosh or hyperbolic cosine of x is defined as exponential of x plus exponential of negative x divided by 2. And sine h, 
uh, hyperbolic sine function or sine or sheen function is defined as exponential of x minus exponential of negative x over 2. And tangent h or hyperbolic tangent is defined as hyperbolic sine divided by hyperbolic cosine, just like tangent function. And they are similar to trigonometric functions. Remember, uh, in terms of if you use Euler's formula, we can define cosine x as exponential of ix plus exponential of negative ix over 2. And sine x as exponential of ix minus exponential of negative ix over 2i and tangent x as uh, sine x over cosine x. So they are very similar. Uh, instead of using you know, imaginary units here, we just use uh, real numbers. But of course, they are different. And uh, for trigonometric function, we have this. Cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to 1. But for hyperbolic cosine and hyperbolic sine, we have this. Cosine hyperbolic squared theta minus sine h squared is 1. Okay. Just like cosine and sine, you know, this means cos h theta squared, and this means cos uh, sine h theta squared, okay? So it's not plus, but minus here. They are similar, but different. We also have something similar to uh, well-known trigonometric identities, for example, uh, hyperbolic sine x plus y is hyperbolic sine x and cosine hyperbolic y plus cosine hyperbolic x times sine hyperbolic y. And similarly, so this is very similar, very similar to uh, trigonometric identity and uh, sine h x minus y and uh, sine h, cosine h, y, minus cosine h, x, sine h, y. So compare this with, uh, for example, sine of x plus y. What was this? Sine x, cosine y, minus, plus, plus. Uh, cosine x and uh, sine y. So actually this is plus minus and plus minus, same order. So they are actually I almost identical. And uh, you should try to prove these identities. Okay, that's all for this video. See you later.